Welcome back to another episode of the Amateur Hour podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as always, whenever you are listening to us or watching us on YouTube. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We are in with another guest. But firstly, before we introduce the man himself, how are you as always, mate? I see you got the new Atomic Coaching Jumpers. Yeah, all good, man. All good. This is a sample um, which just came yesterday, but I'm buzzing with it. So I think... There will be they'll be available to everyone, obviously, obviously, but like obviously they're going to be mainly for clients, um, which is the same. I best get one, mate. Yeah, of course, bro. I've got I've got the sample one says coach on the bet. Oh, oh yeah, um, because I just wanted that's the font I wanted, but I said I'm I'm obviously going to keep the sample. So if you want to write coach on the back instead of athlete, um, then I'll keep that one, and then the other ones will just say athlete, um. So yeah, no, they're actually decent. Like they're just they're not they're nothing crazy, but quality wise, but like they're good. Um, so I'm excited. They're made by um, you know, Rob Taylor. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you saying. Yeah, it's his his little com- his company does it. Um, so yeah, no, I'm buzzing with that. Everything it was all good on the on this end, bro. I'm excited for this episode. I think it's gonna be a It'll good, be good mate. I think it's gonna be a little bit of insight on something that's a little bit different. We don't see very often. No. No, we, we don't, don't see very often for sure. So right. it'll be good to get a little insight on uh, how he's done it, what he's done, what he's planning on doing, how this weekend went, what were his thoughts, what were his feelings. We'll go through that, mate. But I'm glad we'll have to get some amateur hour podcast. Oh, bro, yeah, 100%. 100%. If you, cause obviously, I brought up my own little um, top yeah, as well with my clients. Yeah. But, um, amateur hour ones need to happen. So, people, if you want the amateur hour, t-shirts that's called the logo mate yeah we'll, we'll we'll get a good design we'll get a really good cool i'll get something sorted that would be decent but um that nah, mate, all good for my end i had a good leg session today which was nice i was like the first rotation of my new training plan so everything's going smoothly awesome. just quite nice but all in all mate nothing's changed everything's the exact same so everything's all good and everything is well but we'll go through uh, before he actually comes on, we'll go through um, our guest. So we have got Jack Richardson on the podcast. And obviously, like we said, um, it's a little bit different to what we usually see. The man is self-coached. He has just done his first show of the season. I think the first time he's competed since 2022, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we'll go through his peak Obviously, as you can see here, it says I spilled over in the morning of my show and obviously he gave some rationale on what he did. So we'll let him go through that. But he is self-coached. I don't know how long he has been self-coached for. But as we can see here, he brought a very good package to the ZFN Games, which was uh, which is very good. I believe he won his class and just got um, pipped in the overall. So as you can see here, first time competing in two years. We'll go through his package two years ago as well, what he's improved on. Because I know he ended up winning an overall at a show, didn't he? But he gained like eight, was it like nearly 10, 15 pounds, something like that? And then ended up winning like an overall? Yeah, he yeah he like rebounded into a show after that was it. and won an overall. So we'll go through obviously what he's improved on, anything that he's done differently over this period of time, how it's been obviously going through being self-coached. But... It'll be good to get an insight on what he's done, how he's found it, because the reason why people get a coach themselves is to take away that second guessing. Obviously, he's probably got people in this corner that he's probably having people overlook him. But then again, is he? Uh, it'll be good to get, good to get a little insight if he's just doing it all, all itself. Yeah. Um, so when you are self coach, you probably get just like a second pair of eyes running over things, and then he'll make the final call. So if he does have those people, who are those people? But uh, I think who ended up winning the overall was it that guy? It was Con- that yeah. Oh. yeah, the guy in the middle, Connor. Uh, he won the overall. He's coached by Tom. Yeah. And just but... looking at these now, bro. I think Jack takes it from the back for sure. Oh, for sure, mate. Yeah, for sure. Jesus Christ, his back is ridiculously good. Um, insanely good. Is it like thick, dense fucking back? Uh, from the front, he's not far off. I think Connor's just got a little bit more. Shape, not even shape, because Jack's shape's really good. It's just more muscle, really. It's just the top line, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just the width through the top line. But considering how old Jack is, yeah, Jack's young, his, and his runway of progression within the sport is very, uh, very exciting to say the least. But that's what we're going to go. We're going to run through. 
But other than that, mate, for myself, it's been, like I said, it's been a normal week for me. But we're just going to see where he's at, obviously what he's got planned. I know he's got... I'm going to ask him actually. It'd be pretty um, silly if it's not. I, I'd assume he's going for the British. Mm -hmm. um, but who knows? Who knows? And then uh, see if I, he's have, I have sent him the link. So. Oh, mate, he'll be in the second, mate. He'll be in the second. But I've got your, um, I've got your clients tagging you now, mate. In like, um, sweet in sweets, picking mixes, mate. You know what? I actually bought these in the shop today to show you this. Actually, that just reminded me. I put them in the drawer. I found these in a corner shop. Mate, the Bruh. rip rolls. <laughs> yes, that's that's a special sweet. If, if if anyone eats those, know what you're doing because that's a that's a legit sweet. I love the fact that it says let them rip as well. <laughs> I'll go crazy with it. I'm excited to eat them. <laughs> I actually mate, thought but, I bought that earlier. Mate, you're gonna have to say to Tom like, mate. Can I just uh can I just get a a, a roll, a, a sweetie roll in my yeah. pre-workout meal? I bet you'd say yeah as well. Probably would, yeah. I love it. Intra workouts, man. <laughs> intra workout. Intra, intra safety bar, um safety bar yeah, squats. You've got safety bars tomorrow, mate. That that's gonna make me get Has he got it tomorrow have you? Yeah. So what are you aiming for? Uh what did I do last week? Three and a half plates for six. So I want to try and get that for eight. Mm -hmm. oh, I can I can definitely there was definitely one more there last week I just pushed it out so uh, I think I can get eight I just got I've just got to fucking go I well, got I got to not be scared the the thing is I'm so scared of just folding forward with this bar because you can't just like flick it off your back um so it's just getting over that fear of of being folded but we'll do it mate you'll be up is it your th third week running it now fourth um uh, fourth. Third, yeah. The, this will be my fourth. This will be my fourth. Yeah, mate, you'll get eight or nine easy. Yeah, I think get I think eight or nine easy, bro. As soon as, soon as I get over eight on three and a half plates, I'm going straight to four plates, and then I don't care if that's like a three repper. That will be worked up again. So I'm just going to get is, like eight, then drop, then eight. And then this is the, and this is the reason why he's got old man knees. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. You can see, yeah. There's no, there's no five kilo progression. I don't add five kilo, but they're too small. Is mate, twenty so kilo oh, progressions only, mate? Yeah, I just added ten. It's tens and twenties. Yeah. Well, to be fair, mate, no, it's tens of biscuits, bro. Tens are a big yeah, they're biscuit. Small. They're just they're yeah, they're they're, they're all right. Mate, get a client <laughs> come through. Yeah, mate, made a five kilo, put five kilo each side in corners. They're like, yeah, mate, that's not good. That's not good enough. What are you doing? You definitely Even could have matched reps, better execute doesn't matter, mate, at all. I'd rather if you put a ten on and lose reps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snap your knee. It's all right. We'll, yeah. we'll just come to that issue when it comes around. Yeah, no, we'll be fine. We'll just put BPC in. <laughs> Have you job, programmed any safety bar squats for your clients yet? Um, I think I've got them in one. I know as soon as I started posting them, one of them came up to me on on WhatsApp. Came to me and was like, "Uh, bro, can I can I put safety bars in?" I was like, "Yeah, we could we could definitely put it in." I think. That excitement of safety bars got me excited for everyone else to do it again, which is sick. Because I, I love that movement. I've seen, did you see Hex doing it again? Um, at the moment, Hex got it in his rotation. He's got like six plates aside. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Hex so strong. It's sick. He's strong at everything though. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. He's he's got there's nothing that he's he can he can hang with the with the big boys when it comes to training. Like he's strong. I swear I swear it was like barbell rowing like 220 kilos. Yeah, easily as well. Like when when he used to train like consistently with Holly said, like they were matching numbers on most movements. That's with, mental, mate. And Holly Holly says like one of the strongest bodybuilders out there. It's uh, oh yeah, easy, mate. I just want to touch on Holly's head, but also as well the Olympia, mate. We're going to go through our own predictions in another episode. I'm seeing people having Bonac above Rafa. No. Don't even, I might even get me started here. But anyway, he's in the waiting room. Oh, we'll, get him in. we'll see what he thinks about the Olympia. Well, yeah, mate, we will do as well. But yeah, Rafa over yeah. an underboat. No, not 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 this time round. Come on, mate. Not this time. Not this time. Too easy. Mate, it's too easy. That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> he, he forget it. It's too easy. I think he has... A little. Here he is. 
Happy. Good, bro. How are you? How we doing, man? Are we okay? Yeah, you good? Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Good, good, What good. we love to hear, brother. What we love to hear, mate. We've already given you an introduction, mate. We're not going to ask you about your life story, where you grew up and where, how long you've been started training for. Everyone, I think everyone who's listening and watching this podcast already knows who you are. And if they don't, I'm sure they'll get to know through this podcast, mate. But we're going to go through... Where you're at, mate? How you been? Firstly, obviously, we know you're in prep. You just competed this weekend at the ZFN Games. We're going to go through that, mate, because I saw your post this morning about your peak, how that went, which is pretty decent. But more importantly, mate, going to go through the process of being self-coached and all of that stuff. But firstly, mate, how are you? How are you feeling today on prep? I'm good. Yeah, not too shabby. Uh, currently in the midst of a big dig. So on... The Sunday I was 222 pounds, and yesterday I woke up at 215 pounds. Um, and yeah, I, essentially the the way I set up the peak was one to obviously peak for the show, but two to freshen me up, um, to elicit a, a very nice response to dig in, and um, that's essentially. Pretty much how I've been doing this prep is, you know, I'll freshen up and then I can really, really respond very well at the back of that. And that was a mistake um, that was made in my previous preps. I was just digging throughout, really, and then just not being able to get that last bit off. But then at the same time being like over dieted and fading and having that flatter look on stage no for sure i think it's definitely one aspect of prep that is overlooked massively where bringing yourself out of that deficit then putting yourself in a more fresh response to go back into the deficit mm -hmm. people just think digging 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 is the way to go about things but taking yourself out and putting yourself back in is always good but this is your what prep is this competitive season is it your third competitive fourth competitive season Hmm. I don't want to. This is my fourth competitive season. Yeah. So I think I've done 17 shows in total. Across the course of four. That's decent. Yeah. Like, I don't compete frequent because I've had, you know, a decent amount of time off to gain and grow. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I just rinse it for all it's worth, really, uh, generally. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you've learned that over the period of that, that mistake that you made in. Because we've said that the last time you competed was 2022. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that the mistake that you made in that previous prep where you couldn't get the last bit off and you just kept digging and digging and digging? Yeah. So in, in that prep, um, we sort of dug uh, pretty much through the show, uh, leading up to the show, and we were a little bit behind and we sort of dug a little bit harder to achieve a suitable condition for the the regional and then afterwards there was a show a couple of weeks after that and then we just carried on digging for that um and then we dug for the following shows and my look was just progressively getting worse mm -hmm. and just wasn't able to peak properly and the the fatigue was that high and that uh, i i just wasn't up taking carbs and you know we would try things like you know over a kilo of carbs and uh, my body looked like it just was not filling up and it just had this soft faded look. Now that was over the course of four competitions. And then I just called it a day because I just was not getting the placings that I wanted. And I was like, you know, mentally could I carry on digging and go to like a finals that I've been qualified for? Yeah. But is that going to be conducive? No. And am I going to bring the loop that I want? No. And could I use that time um, towards more beneficial things like, you know, health phase, getting back to growing. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you know, what, what really gave me a lot of perspective was what I did after I called it a season. Um, because I went away and filmed a YouTube video, 20K Challenge, and then I was like, I I put on like 20 pounds over like two, three weeks, but I filled out a lot. Yes, there was some, there was body fat added for sure. 
hundred percent, but the physique um, was like a lot fuller, a lot fresher. And I thought, let's fuck around. Let's do. Let's enter a show. Um, there was a show that had a ninety second posing routine, and they were judging the posing at this. I thought this would be a fun one to do, and I ended up actually having my first win of the season at that show and actually getting my first overall at that show as well, which I felt like uh, quite guilty about, to be honest, because I was like, fuck, I've just ate 20,000 calories and, you know, fucked around for a little bit and just take the show. And there's other competitors here who've dieted very fucking hard. It means a lot to them when they've traveled for this show. And I felt a bit guilty, but I did a couple more shows after that, just fucking around. And again, whilst I was still relatively in shape, but ultimately that gave me the perspective of the utilization of food and realistically the difference between a, a fresh physique and a not fresh physique and um moving forwards that that helped me as a coach um when i'm prepping people but also with my approach this season and you know just being able to find and walk that balance of being conditioned but also bringing that fuller fresh physique because ultimately when I did decide to finish that season, I I was disappointed quite a bit. And I, I was sort of questioning my potential as a bodybuilder. I was like, hmm, I, this is, you know, I've just, this is my first city season. Is this all I've got to show for it? I don't look like, you know, I've started steroids really. Um, and I don't look like I've I've gained a lot of tissue and maybe, you know, I don't have the potential that I thought I, I did. And then, you know, the, after after I fucked around and did these shows, the feedback from the judges, the people in the crowd who were who were bodybuilders slash slash coaches, they were like, Oh, if you were tired, mate, you've got all the potential in the world. This and that is just only weeks prior completely different to the feedback I was getting. Um, and it looked like a, I did a full off season, but just didn't diet properly at mm -hmm. these shows. Um, and they were like, wow, your physique's got so much potential. And da -da 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 -da. and again, the, the overarching difference was the fullness and the freshness in the physique. And uh, the weekend just gone, um, I feel like I brought... A, a similar version of that where it was nice, full and fresh, not quite a hundred percent in, but um, obviously, you know, with more time, hopefully I can bring that conditioned, but full fresh physique. For sure, man. It's always good though. Cause obviously we, me and Colin talk about preps all the time. We go through how important mm -hmm. it is to find out what works well for you and going through preps differently in terms of how you're going to manage things. And you, especially with your physique, mate, it's like the bubbliness that you have. That is your, that's your sort of advantage. Like your muscle bellies are very bubbly, very round. And when you lose that, it's probably very hard to get that back. So mm. sort of keeping that fresh look, but also making sure you get in the right amount of balance and condition. Because you see it quite a lot where somebody's really, really, really peeled, but they're not that full. Or you get someone that's really full, and not really showing the condition very I can't it's really hard to find that balance. Absolutely, yeah. A hundred percent. Because you know, it's 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 funny that you you mentioned that like I've got this bubbly look because again in, in the midst of that season, that was not apparent. And obviously as a natty, you don't really have that bubbly look anyway. So in my head, I didn't know that was a part of my physique until mm -hmm. I did fill out. I was like, uh, and again, that gave me perspective of actually what type of bodybuilder I am. And there's also there's different versions. And I know that me being flat as fuck it just really detracts from my physique. And, you know, some competitors can truly get away with that, such as, you know, on a more advanced scale, uh, like Samson, like he doesn't go flat. 
right? Like, and how he peaks for shows. Like, he's sort of, him and his wife, uh, they've started trying and just bringing him in on the flatter end. So he, he's got that crisper look because he does mm-hmm. not lose that pop. Whereas with myself, if I'm flat, then my shape just goes to shit. So there needs to be an element of that fullness there. But again, you know, I can't be so uh, paranoid about the, the fullness that I don't let go of the body fat as well. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like when you want to be, you want to be full as, as well to obviously not mask the condition that you have. Because when you are flat, you're masking condition, then you obviously need that fullness to try and show the condition that you have. And then if you're too full, obviously it spills. Next thing you know, it's like, it's such a fine balance, man. And the fact that you're trying to find that and like, at the end of the day, it's unlocking the code to your physique by yourself as well. And that's what we want to touch upon as well. Have you had any sort of second pair of eyes? Because obviously you hear people say, oh, I'm, so, I'm self-coached, but I've got this person and this person looking over me and then I make the sort of decision of what they say. But has it just been you and you only or do you send your check shots oh. to anyone else? Ironically, you know, it started off, I was sending photos to a couple of people and as the prep went on and I got close to the show, I just stopped sending photos. And um, that that was on my behalf really, because I didn't want any external opinions to sort of cloud my judgment and change the approach that I was going to take. And I wanted, if I was to make a mistake, to know, well, to, to own it, really, and to learn from it, rather yeah. than one suggest something, I do it and it doesn't work out, because to me, that would be like similar to, to being coached anyway. And if, you know, your coach fucks it up. So I truly wanted to be able to master the art of being objective. And as I got close to the show, I just, again, I just wanted to do this myself without having my hand held. And again, I know that does leave margin for error and because potentially you can get to a point where you think you are looking at yourself objectively and then looking back you go, ah shit okay maybe i wasn't mm-hmm. but again i wanted to go through that because i know the process of going through that will actually lead me to be able to be more objective in the future and learn from the mistakes and if there was a mistake made it's like i mentioned on that post with the peaking you know i was i was happy with how things went uh especially for the type of show it was for myself when I was just warming up and it was just, you know, my first crack, I was happy, but there was definitely things that I would have done differently. And I'm glad I did those things because now I know exactly what I would do differently and exactly, you know, the things that have gone well, what hasn't. Yeah, for sure. For sure. um, I know your question. Yeah. At the moment it's fully, Mm. It is fully just myself, really. That's good to hear, man. That's really, really good to hear. Because I know a lot of people are coached, like, for example, off the top of my head, you got AJ, you got Josh Maley, who obviously has just quit bodybuilding or retired, and then you got John Jewett. And I hear different people have different methods of, like, checking in with themselves, where they'll take checking shots, they'll look at their initial thoughts, they'll go away for an hour, and then they'll come back to them. It's like generally you look at your checking shots, like, two, two days later, and you're like, actually... Yeah. I actually quite like the way I looked there. So is there a way that you actually mitigate that or go through that process any any differently than what you would normally do with any client? Yeah. So I actually try to treat myself as um as a client, you know. I'll like write up a plan. I'm like, okay, let's follow this. And you know, ultimately I am trying to avoid making impulsive decisions. Um, and not being too reactive because, as you said, you know, you can look at yourself and go, ah, right, okay, I, I don't like these shots. And then maybe it's a it's a, just a, a matter of hours later and you're like, ah, no, actually, you know, I feel this way about it. So yeah. um, I do take just two sets of check-in shots uh, a week usually, and that's one fasted at home and one in the gym after push, and that's standardized. And then... Um between that, I'll just wake up in the morning, weigh myself, look in the mirror, and then crack on. 
you know, and, um, you know, say if it is a peak week, I might be more analytical and, and just more, you know, just probably take more photos. But it, again, that is dependent on how I'm approaching the peak week. So say if I'm making a bunch of adjustments, I'm like, okay, cool. I want to see how I look without any water in me. All right. I want to see how I look with water in me. And a lot of this would just be based on me just looking in the mirror and I'm just looking at certain body parts, you know, that I know yeah. that blur out quite easy. The, the ones that are susceptible to, to get waterier or the one, the areas that will be susceptible to get flatter. Um, uh -huh. I, it's more so me looking at just specific body parts um, that are coming in. So like I'll wake up in the morning and, is say if I see a drop in the scale weight, I'll come in, I'll check my glutes because that, that's where I know I hold, I hold. I'll check my hamstrings and then I'll just check the fullness on my back and because that that's where I'm susceptible to lose fullness. And then it's just those sort of indicators that, that are guiding me. And again, it's I'm not constantly checking my physique. I'm actually um, at a point where I'm detached from it. So I'm not, again, you know, eliciting this emotional response, this uh, impulsive response where I'm reacting. I'm going, oh, fuck, let's just change this today or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because if I do that with a, with a client, I wouldn't go, right, let's take a shot. Um, You know, let's, oh, okay, let's change it. Oh, let's take another shot. Let's change this now. You know, I just keep changing my mind with with things. It's it's a balance of being able to having a have a preemptive plan in place, and then also being reactive to changes and just walking the balance between the two. Yeah, that, it's the it's the art of being proactive and reactive at the same time, isn't it? Where you can have the best plan in place, but everything's going to change, or some things might change, and you might look flat one day when you thought, oh, I thought I wasn't expecting to look like this. Then it's, you've turned out like this. You might look better than expected or worse than expected. And then you have to make, make changes on the fly. But we'll go through your peak, mate, if Connor can bring it up. Um, obviously, how you peaked for the show. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the plan was to come into this weekend, obviously, freshen up for another dig. So, you probably fed up into it. But as you can see here, love the... Love the caption. I spilled over the morning of my show and then obviously gave the rationale behind it, which I gave a little look over it, mate, and it made complete sense um to what you did. But if you want to give the listeners a little overview of what your plan was and obviously how you expected it to go, and obviously what actually the result was on the on the yeah. day. And so um the the plan was to Again, just really emphasize just freshening up that week. Um, again, for the look on it uh, on the day itself, but also so I can actually continue digging and not have the mistake of, you know, I've dug into this show and then I'm digging on top of digging for the next shows. Now, going into this show, I essentially just had. I, I sort of front loaded a little bit, then I had higher fats to sort of hold the the fullness towards the end. I was quite moderate with oral usage. I pulled out the injectables at the weekend, um, and I also pulled out the T three. And the, this is an approach that probably was controversial for a lot of people because I put in the T three very briefly. Um, for the week prior to freshening up. And I was freshening up for, for like two weeks. So I had, so essentially this was the timeline. I had a bit of a diet break and then I dug hard for two weeks. And that mm -hmm. one week I had like a full time of T3 because I know in response to the T3, I could just drop like that. And that's exactly what I did. And then I took it out. And the incentive behind that was I didn't want the T3 to peak and me try to fill out. 
I actually wanted to be able to utilize the benefit and uh, have a similar response after the, the actual peak itself going into the pro quals. But I also wanted to see how easy it was to, to be full from the back of that. And it did, obviously I knew there was going to be a rebound off the back of it. But again, with it not being in for so long, I I knew that the rebound would be so heavy. Now, during the week, um, I, I filled up like that. It was quite easy. Upon reflection, you know, just to, to begin the peak week itself, I wasn't like as flat as I thought I was. Again, I think the previous preps sort of made me paranoid about the flatness. And... I did have the incentive to to dry out more so that, than I did. Um, and I sort of, again, underestimated how full I was. But on the day prior, I, I was sticking to the plan of higher fats and stuff. And I sort of planned this a couple of days before. I thought, I'm going to have some higher carbs. And again, it wasn't ridiculous. It was literally um, 100 grams of oats extra, and that that was it. And that was enough to spill me over. But again, due to me taking out, you know, something like a T3, due to me being already relatively full, I spilt over. But that was the incentive behind me getting up quite early in the morning so I could check on it and mitigate um any any sort of approach because I did want to sort of walk into the show because it was an early showing and I didn't want to try and top up. I I believe that was less margin for error. So I woke up spilled for sure and I thought, okay, cool. I didn't really panic because I knew there was enough time to mitigate that. And essentially all I did was I utilized a bit more of peak max. I didn't drink anything apart from, you know, just sips to actually get the peak max in. And I took uh, Anavor, I took Halo, I took Superdrol, and I didn't eat anything until the show. And, and I knew that from the posing, waking up with me hardening up off the back of that, that there was no, there was going to be zero issue of holding that fullness, and it was going to be a matter of just hardening up throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think I was going to flatten out at all. And again, there was, there was probably like five hours uh, between these photos of me being on stage. Now, the mistake that I did make was I took an additional super draw backstage, and the reason why this was a mistake was my digestion just did not respond fantastic mm -hmm. to it. Obviously, there wasn't a lot of water going in. Um, and again, with me sort of overspilling, I was obviously, that's my digestion susceptible to be in a more vulnerable state. So, like, although I was able to vacuum on stage and although my midsection was still controlled... I knew that it was more so blurred than it, it should have been. And again, that, that was perspective for myself, really, going going into it. Um, like if I was to do that again, you know, I'm not, I would, I'd probably not take the additional super draw. I'd probably actually just have a more simpler approach where... Mm -hmm things are just a bit more stable throughout the week. No, and I get you. No, for sure. Mate, it's the fact that one of the only mistakes that you could probably pick out was the fact that you took probably an extra 10 milligrams of Superdoll extra backstage and it blurred your midsection slightly. It was probably quite a good thing, to be fair. But in essence, it was just the fact of obviously having that super compensation of spilling and then obviously on the day mitigating that by little things like people don't underestimate the value of posing prior to going on stage little things like getting harder pre-stage because how many times do you see people where they come out for their, their routine and they go 
they look way better than what they did when they were just posing and doing comparisons. And the reason for that is because they're getting harder and harder and harder. So the fact that you obviously you're holding fluid and obviously spill, and then you're posing, obviously expelling that fluid, getting harder as you are harder as you posed. Next yeah. scene, they find that find, find that balance really really well. So. I, and then, absolutely and you know on the on the day itself like one of the reasons why i didn't panic at that look is because i know i i i just knew my body to an extent where i'm like i know this will dry out i know having um minimal water would just dry it out and bring a, a crispier physique and i don't know from the posing that i'm doing now it will harden up so I just made a point of actually getting backstage earlier um, as early as I possibly can and just taking videos of myself posing backstage and, and just seeing that hard up and, and, and I sort of gauged how much to pump up. I was just pumping up very slowly and I was doing, you know, some rounds of posing in between. Again, nothing too aggressive. I'm just taking my time with it. And that was allowing me to harden up over time. And again, it was mm -hmm. just allowing myself a, a sufficient amount of time backstage to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's this the show that you want to make the mistakes at rather than at the pro qualifier, like with the with the super drum now knowing that, taking that into your more important, bigger shows or however you want to call them, it's the best show to do it at is the the regional. So it's, it's Absolutely. quite well. Yeah. And, and that's why I wanted, if I was going to take gambles with things, I would do it at that show. Yeah. You know? If I was going to have a different approach or whatever, I, I was going to do it at that. But ultimately, I know it's going to be easier to peak for a show when I'm leaner. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. and, and For sure. Yeah. I, I, I did say this going into it that there doesn't need to be as much emphasis uh, on the full, uh, on, on trying to be full, because I know that it's not easy to lose the fullness if you're not 100% in. The emphasis should really be more so on the drier side. Um, but again, you know, it, like I, there was still a part of me that was admittedly a little bit paranoid of, of, being on the flatter side going into this but oh, again for sure, mate. I, I didn't do it to the extent where again i was doing crazy shit with nutrition i was like having like you know a large fucking cheat meal the night before or anything like that like i it was quite moderate throughout in regards that's to good to see so, mate, I was just look. I was, I was looking over the the overall look, mate, and it was really good to see how you've timed it perfectly. Essentially, where a big mistake people do is they peak for the earlier show, and then, like you said, your in your previous preps where the look gets worse and worse and worse. But you can tell that because I think your preps have only been fifteen weeks so far, sixteen weeks. Yeah, I mean, the prep for this show was for fourteen weeks, which was yeah. the wickiest prep I've ever done for any show. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something that you've learned, obviously. Like, like I said, without the amount of muscle you have, obviously, it all kind of comes down to how well you conducted your off season and your improvement phase, and not getting too soft. And it was like thirty pounds in four, fourteen weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it just goes to show, mate, how you've periodized in a way where your physique can only get better across the course of the weeks, and you'll freshen up, and it'll just mean that you're going to get leaner, fuller, and you'll find that balance really, really well. And that, again, that's a big mistake people make is where they peak for the qualifier, and then next thing you know, well, they go to the they go to the main show or the, sorry, the regional, and they go to the qualifier, and next thing you know, they look worse than what they did at the regional. And I'm thinking, obviously, because they haven't periodized their prep in a way where they can only get fresher. Because next thing you know. They're probably peaked after like 22 weeks of prepping. And next thing you know, their next show is in five weeks extra or four weeks down the line, so 26 weeks or worth of prep. People don't realize it can, it's so hard to maintain that look. But the fact that you're in a position where you came at around sort of probably, in my perspective, like 85%, 90%, and it's only going to get better to 100% as the weeks go on. It's so, exciting for sure, mate. Yeah, and, the, and the, this is the thing. I mean, this is, again, one of the reasons why I wanted to do things without a second eye because I had 
so many conflicting things you know i'll be making posts and like for example on reddit and people are like oh don't worry you know you should be worried about coming in too soon and then you know the which i i think people on reddit just don't know what the <laughs> they're on about um and then i've had people saying well you, you actually want to carry on digging you want to be a bit sharper for this or whatever and i was like mm, I want to see where this lands and that's going to give me perspective because then I'll have the opportunity to pick a suitable show after that. Like mm -hmm. if, if, you know, I did need to pull off a shitload more, I could pick a show with enough time to be able to do that without rushing. And, you know, if I'm not too far off in regards to conditioning, then I can, pick a, a relatively sooner show mm -hmm. so it was like i'm just going to leave this here see where this lands and then then i can pick from that and this show was all about perspective of seeing you know where my physique standards are at after a couple of years off but also where my conditioning's at as well mm -hmm. because you can gauge with photos you can gauge you know leading into it but i think until you're under the stage light being compared to other competitors, especially at a competitive show such as this one was, um, that's what ultimately gives you a good amount of perspective. I knew this was going to be one of the harder shows because th that was pretty much the last regional. I th you know, and I, a lot of people will leave it till last minute and enter those shows. So I was like, there's going to be some good competition. So, it's not like I've entered, you know, a show of just one person in and that, you know, I wanted some great perspective to know that, right, I'm I'm against good competition. Obviously, I want to go for a pro card this year. That's going to be against excellent competition. So, you know, if I can do well at this show, then that's a good sign. Yeah, for sure, mate. Especially when you've done so well, and you and you know deep down that you've not come in at your best. That's quite a good feeling. All that. Like some people have come in like nearer their hundred percent, and you're all probably a little bit further away from them, and you're still beating them. It's quite a nice confidence booster. But in terms of your improvements made from your twenty twenty two, what were the improvements that you wanted to make, and are you happy with the improvements that you've made? So, um. I actually literally just made a post um, uh, in regards to the comparison of the 22. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, so it was a comparison of the first show of my last season to the first show of this season, the show that's just gone. And I'm 25 pounds heavier. And the conditioning isn't too dissimilar. You can get it up, Connor, if you want. Yeah, I was going to say. It's literally... Right. Um... Now, on the on the left, in the 22, that was me flat as fuck, digging right up to the show. But you can right... tell, though, mate. You can tell like, automatically through like, the top line, the rear delts, the, the arms. Like, look at the side leg. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah, I mean, like... I was I was flat as fuck on on the left, and um, you could on my face. You see the puffiness on my face on the left. Mm -hmm. There was a certain point in time in prep where it was getting leaner, and it started puffing out as I got fatigued, and that did not go until I stopped the season, and um, obviously that that was a, a, a matter of fatigue. So I'm happy with. Um, the approach being improved. I, I believe that the approach has been improved this prep. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the fact that I feel like I've got enough wiggle room to, to respond further and bring a lot more body fat off. Because again, in, in previous preps, I would just get to a point, hit a wall and I would have this weird combination of being over dieted, but still not like ultra peeled. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with that fact. Um, in regards to the changes in my physique, 
the biggest things that I wanted to to bring up was one, my back. My back's always been a weaker point. And I, I think that's been one of the bigger differences. Um, and in my head, I, I've always just thought, my back shit, my back shit, my back shit. And, you know, seeing my back shots this weekend in comparison to, again, some decent bodybuilders, I was like, holy shit, I, my back's not actually shit. Okay. You know? <laughs> And that's that's like a crazy epiphany because once you when when you know you've got like a shit body part, obviously you just get fixed like that. So in your mind, you know, you're like, right, this is something I'm working on. And then it's the accumulation of time that's gonna bring you up. And it's mm -hmm. when boom, you're like, oh, what the fuck? You know, I had people saying, like, oh, your back's decent, but I didn't believe it until again that show that it's actually come up um, quite nicely. So I was happy with that. Um, I think the legs grew, even though I wasn't trying to grow my legs too much. Um, I actually reduced my leg volume to like dirt low in the off season. And that was like one, that was four sets of quads every eight days. And two sets of those were leg extension sets. Right. Okay. I was gonna say, mate, your quads and I suppose your posing's got way better as well, mate. Can I just say your posing's got drastically better, like your back double, um, your front lat spread putting your hands further down, great quads as well, and your rear leg and your um back door bicep as well, like, so, like tucking the glutes slightly, making your adductors yeah, nice. your adductors look way bigger, mate. Like as you can see there, um tucking your glutes slightly more. It just makes your waist look more narrow, back look bigger, legs thicker. Like, calves have come up as well, mate. Big up for the calf growth. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I, have, I had this secret formula. Um, I got it from AJ during prep, who I believe got it from, from a hunter. And for guys watching, it's so simple. Like, two to three times a week, start your workout. Two sets on the standing calf. The last set is a drop set and two sets on a seated calf. And that's it. And ever since I've done that, my calf's blown up. And every single client that I've done that with, they've they've got crazy calves. And it's literally as simple as that. Obviously, execution, train them intensely. But yeah, that honestly seems to fucking work for everyone. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mate. That's the secret. That's the big right, that's the secret. It, literally, and I think I think it was Hunter that um, that AJ got that from. But yeah, the posing's better. In fact, you know the irony is when I tried to tuck my glutes in in the previous prep, my back would fuck off. Yeah, like look worse. So I think um, there was a sufficient amount of muscle built. To the, to the extent where I was able to do that. For sure, mate. And even that shot as well, like bringing that front leg slightly further in, closing the gap, making the quad. These little things, mate, like like I said, like you're so bubbly and round. It just makes you look even more. It like accentuates everything that's positive in terms of your physique, even okay. more so heightens that, which is really, really cool to see. But the fact that you've done this self-coach, mate, like a lot of people, like try and go self-coach and they try and do these things and they try and get a second off somebody and the next thing you know it, it, it like it skews their own judgment like you said but the fact that you're taking that process and a lot of people will take that um because i know a lot of people are self-coach because they can't also obviously afford a coach or etc cetera, etc cetera, they might not want a coach but they'll take a lot from the way you do things and how you've done things and how you've managed this prep and what you've done what you've learned from previous previous experiences how you, how you check in all that sort of stuff mate people will take that from that so it's massively appreciated mate but in terms of the progress you've made it's been what 20 20 or pounds which is meant 25 pounds which is mental yeah um i, I would say yeah, it's 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 obviously hard to gauge, you know, how muscle how much muscle has been put on. Um yeah. but you know, I'm really happy considering the fact that, you know, the it's it's ironic because looking after I did the prep, I look back and I'm like, right, I know how to handle that prep differently. And now I'm in the prep handling it differently. Now that I'm in the prep. I'm looking back at the off season and I'm like, 
I know how to handle that definitely to, to make a lot more fucking progress. And although I'm happy with the changes, I'm also conscious of the fact that I could have made a lot more progress. Mm -hmm. One, because I did, you know, fuck my shoulder and that took a long time. And well, it's still fucked. It's still, I'm actually doing a prep with a partially dislocated um, shoulder region area thing um, going on. And the actual ability to pose with that has been hard and to actually train around that has been quite hard to, to actually make it look symmetrical mm -hmm. and to actually align myself properly. Um, but again, I, I think the the approach to the off season, I believe I can do better. Obviously, you know, time will tell whether that could be the case. Um, but it's always ironic because it's like I, I had the exact same thing f coming off the, the previous prep, but that is bodybuilding. That's that it, is, mate. That is what I did allude to in the uh in in the post that you just had up is you know, you learn from it, you get better. And essentially, when you make mistakes or you have a loss or you don't have a great showing, it shouldn't, if this is the sport for you, it shouldn't make you quit. It should strengthen your resolve and make you more motivated to to work harder, work smarter, and to, to improve. Hey, for sure. It's that sort of learning curve where you either take it as a loss or you take it as a learning curve. And if you can take it as a learning curve to improve the next time around, like in your sense where people like that instant gratification, don't they? Where in your case, you wanted to probably try and get a better showing, but you ended up carrying on dieting in the 2022 prep and it got worse and worse and worse. And then you had to wait two years to sort of get your own back sort of thing. People don't like that. They usually like, they want in like two weeks, I want to show what's better into it. But people want don't want to put in the work essentially where over a long period of time. And like you said, it's quite ironic where whatever phase you're in, you look at what phase you're, what you'd have done previously on, I can improve on this. And the next time you can do it better. And then I'm sure next time that you'll be in prep in a couple of years time and you go, that last improvement phase, we could have improved from there. But this in turn, like you said, makes your coaching better. Like my prep made my coaching better. It made my approach to coaching better um, for sure. And like you said, you can use this approach on clients, like you said, and you can not use this approach on clients. It's quite nice to see like what works well, what doesn't work well, what you've been through, and you. It's always good when you can talk to a coach and you and you they can say, "I've been through that as well. I know exactly how you feel, and yeah. I've done I've done this. This is the response that is elicited. We'll see whether you get the same response, and if not, we can obviously adjust it to you." But perfect. So it's not only from an athlete perspective, but also from a coaching perspective, mate, it helps you out. And that's just the perspective of bodybuilding, really. And like you said, if it's not for you, then don't do it, mate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like if you can't take a lot, because essentially when you're trying to peak for a show, you're trying to catch the lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, it's even people at pro level, at the Olympia level, with the the best coaches in the world they will have inconsistencies so you know it's it's pretty much an inevitability that at some point in your bodybuilding career you might not have a showing that you like you might make a mistake or or whatever because essentially what we're doing when we're making decisions is we're making educated guesses and the more educated we are, the less of a guess it is. And that education will come from, obviously, you know, knowledge of the actual process, but also knowledge of the actual individual as well. Mm -hmm. It's the practical and application, isn't it? That's all it, it is. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. it, it is an educated guess. And sometimes, you know, you don't get the response you want. And it could be something small. It's like, right, we're going to... Take away a bit of carbs, and this should incentivize this amount of rate of loss. You don't quite get that rate of loss. Right? Or it could be something on a much la larger scheme. So it's like, right, okay, cool. If we start prep now, we should be ready at this time. We put this in. Duh, duh, duh. Oh, shit, that's fucked the loop completely. Mm -hmm. you know? and it is like, it is an educated guess. And it's just always worth acknowledging the fact that 
there's always an opportunity to learn. You know, even if you've done things while well, you've had a good showing, like, you know, I've I've done this show and I won my class, but off the back of it, I was thinking, what can I do better? If I won the overall, I'd be thinking, what could I have done better? Oh, you always, know? mate. It's good. It's good to it's good that you can see that. And a lot of people don't have that mindset. And it's good to see someone within the scope and the bodybuilding body realm have that opinion. Have that be like, what can I get better at? A lot of bodybuilders have it, but a lot don't. So it's nice to see like people sure. do well, but also look at the fact of what can I improve on, which is always good. Because you always yeah. see that people usually go further than the people that don't always try and do well. They just stick to the same things and just sort of try and throw shit at wall and hopefully it sticks essentially so yeah and that is um it's just stubbornness really and i suppose you know it's a it's also ego as well and mm -hmm. it's like right okay no this will work or no this person can't give me but i know best or whatever and you know this is like one of the intent there was multiple incentives behind me coaching myself but i thought the idea of coaching myself in the most important season of my life for myself uh scared the shit out of me and that's why i wanted to do it because i thought right it's important to do shit that scares you because that's how you get challenged and you grow as a person it's character development but also being able to remain objective from start to finish really is it will allow me the opportunity to to achieve some self mastery where I'm able to to balance my ego for sure and, you know because I have to have enough self belief to to go for it but I can't be so cocky or arrogant where I'm not open to self-criticism and and I'm not reflecting on things that I could do better and refining my approach. I mean, I, it's just being able to be balanced. And again, I, I find bodybuilding, the sport in itself, is the art of, of balance because you never want to do too much of thing, one thing or too little. You've got to be balanced with everything in regards to nutrition, training, drug usage whatever I completely, agree. completely agree mate and like i said mate a lot of people take away from the fact of even if they are coached like just making sure that they can find that balance within themselves and how they can approach that themselves is going to be massively important and me, me and connor have had this conversation across the course of starting this podcast where you try and find this balance with everything in terms of bodybuilding in terms of training nutrition drug uh, drug usage what phase you're going through what not to manage is like you find different things like what am i actually stressing over that doesn't really need to be stressed over what should i put my emphasis more onto and like i said mate people get a large takeaway from that so i appreciate you coming on mate we'll wrap it i've answered i've, I've asked all my questions Connor, what about you mate we a quick one are you are we seeing you at the british yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. So, I'm actually not 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, because the, the reason for that is I want to see how this week goes. Um, I know I've got until mid-next week to enter. So, I want to see... Because I don't want to rush yeah. to the point where, again, I'm at that point where, like... With my previous prep, I'm like, shit, okay, I've dug straight through it. I can't really freshen up or whatever or I peak too early or this, that, the other. Um, But, like, if this week goes well, you know, the plan was to dig heavy anyway. So if this week goes well, potentially, you know, if I'm, like, looking at the condition, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is pretty much on track to where I want to be because I realistically I want to – get down if i was to do that show to around about 212 pounds 210 pounds you know and and pull a lot off because the this show is going to be no joke there's going to it's a high standard show and there's going to be a lot of uh, excellent athletes competing because again they're going for the pro card and 
I want to bring a better package, but I also want to bring a package that is the very least in the front running of being competitive for that pro card. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, don't want to just show up and, and get washed out um, because I've just picked it too early. But saying that it would be an opportune show to pick because that is the last pro call in the UK. And it saves me from fucking going to a board abroad and flying to a million countries as well. If I could get it there. Okay. Excited That's for it. Exciting. In short, um, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. Sick, man. Oh, I'm excited to see, mate. But no, thank you. If you want to tell the people your socials, mate, thank you for coming on first and foremost. But no worries, tell people where they can find you. If you've got obviously Instagram, YouTube, whatever, mate, tell the people. Yeah, okay. Um, so I have Instagram, uh Jack.Richardson underscore one. Um, my YouTube is just Jack Richardson. And um I'm I'm a coach. If you want coaching, um, I'm on Reddit as well. I'm on pretty much all all the shit. You know, you just type in my name, you'll probably find me. You know, obviously, you can't if you miss want... him. He's too big. He's too big, mate. Can't miss him. I don't know how you're saying that. You're about seven foot. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm a, I'm a swimmer, mate. I'm a swimmer. I'm not a I'm not a bodybuilder. <laughs> but no, <laughs> can't miss no. me, mate. I can't. You can't miss me at all, unfortunately. But I wish I. I wish what? I was. A lot smaller, but you gotta be. Uh, yeah. gotta, gotta, oh, mate! Don't even get me started. If I could do bodybuilding at five foot ten and then automatically go to six foot four afterwards, that'd be sad. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Five ten still tall. <laughs> mate, yeah. people go to me. Oh, I didn't realize you were this tall. I'm like, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Great you stuff. Know, I get the opposite. They're like, I thought you were taller. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint. That's what I say. I'm saying I'm sorry to disappoint, mate. But um, yeah. Yeah, it just takes more time to fill out. That's all I'm saying. So it's all well and good. But and when mate, you fill out, bro, like it's a dominant physique. Yeah. So we'll see. It's all good though. We're here for it. I'm excited for it. That's the exciting part, isn't it? We'll go with the road I can, tell, I can tell you love the process, mate. That's you know? what it's all about, man. That's what that, it's all that's about. what makes a great bodybuilder. You know, genetics, yeah, cool, whatever. But someone who's truly in love with the process uh, is going to supersede a lot of people who are genetically gifted, you know, because they, they'll just keep going. They'll keep going. And that's what yeah. we're here for. I appreciate it, mate. Genuinely. Thank you. But it's all well and good. Give me, give me five or six years and we'll see where we're at. But we're still going to put the work in nevertheless. But, mate, thank you for coming on. It's greatly appreciated, people. On Instagram, if you could share myself, Connor, as well, Jack, so he can share on his story, show people that he's been on the podcast. YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Love.